Good evening. We'd like to welcome you all to our Elmore County Commission work session dated Monday, January 22, 2018, 5 p.m. We'll call the meeting to order. I'd like to begin with a special presentation. I would like to invite uh, Mr. Chris Champion, the Henry County engineer from the ACEA and ACCA, along with Sonny Brassfield, the executive director of ACCA, to come forward and make their presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to be here this, uh, this evening to represent ACCA and ACEA. Uh, the purpose of my visit here uh, today is to recognize the Elmore County Commission and several of the, its employees for their participation in a very important ACCA program. <clears throat> several years ago, a group of county engineers recognized the need for affordable mo motor grader operator training for counties, uh, county highway departments in Alabama. And as we were looking at this need, it was also brought to our attention that the ACCA Self-Insurance Liability Fund was dealing with several cases tied to motor grader uh, operational safety. And you know, in government, same way in a church, if you recognize a need, what do you do? You appoint a committee. So a committee was appointed to address this need. Uh, <clears throat> and this committee of engineers was given a charge to develop a program that provides counties with affordable motor grader operator training and teaches motor grader operational safety. Now the program that developed leans heavily on ACCA members uh, committing their resources to help other members. Nine counties in Alabama have uh, volunteered uh, as host counties and have hosted uh, training classes uh, two different occasions this past year. Our program uses nine experienced county operators and supervisors from seven counties as field instructors teaching a class of no more than six trainees. And when I say teaching, <clears throat> I mean a field instructor that is in a motor grader with a trainee teaching s safe operation and dirt road grading methods. You know, this past year in June and October, we held our first rounds of classes and from the feedback we received, were very successful and we had 86 trainees from around the state. And that's what brings me to Elmore County. Uh, I would like to express our appreciation to this commission for making, uh, for acting as one of the host counties and for making your facilities available for us to use uh, for this very important training. Chief Engineer and Operations Officer Richie Byer and Deputy Chief Engineer uh, Luke McGinney have given their time to help develop and teach the classroom portion of the training and manage the equipment and facility needs for the classes that were held here in Elmore County. But there are two other Elmore County employees that I would like to give special recognition to and ask them to come up right now, Barry Smith and Chris Welch. Come on, guys. Barry and Chris have served as field instructors in our program, and they helped develop uh, our training curriculum. They attended instructor training and conducted two training classes each in our program. Chris traveled to Butler County uh, as a field instructor uh, to, to hold training there. And these two men, along with seven others from around the state, they've taken ownership of this program. And without their commitment and their enthusiasm, it would not be a success. And as a token of our appreciation, ACCA and ACEA would like to present them with a die cast motor grader in a display case as a recognition for their contributions to this program. Now this is not only thanks for past service because this is uh, this program is not completed. Uh, this coming year there will be two more opportunities 
uh, for these gentlemen to teach training classes. So again, I want to thank this commission for your commitment to this program and making your employees and your resources and facilities available uh, to help statewide with uh, a very important program, motor grader operator training. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Champion. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, while they're taking pictures, can I say one other word? Yes. Um, first of all, the County Commission needs to be uh, uh, thanked for allowing us to have the ability to do that. And uh, not only do these guys go out and train, but we've had several of our own employees go through the training program and it has greatly benefited uh, them as well because they get to uh, train alongside other counties and, and other personnel and those relationships and the, and the uh, communication they have has helped them tremendously. Uh, Mr. Lee Colley, our uh, superintendent that's sitting over here, and Luke's name was mentioned, uh, those two played a huge part as well. Luke did almost all the training. I think I did absolutely nothing but turn the notes over to him. He did the classroom training, which is about a half a day, and uh, Lee was the one who had to pick up the slack while these guys were out doing the training in the different counties. You're talking about three days that, uh, of training, so uh, um, I just want to make sure those uh, individuals are recognized as well, and thank you all for giving us the ability and the, uh, uh, giving us the, instilling us with the, the uh, commitment to allow us to do things like that. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, Sonny Brassfield from the ACCA to come to the podium. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I'll be brief, but I don't want to miss a chance when, when I come to a county uh, where its commission has generated uh, this sense of commitment and uh, involvement for the greater good in its employees without taking the chance to thank you so much for your, for your leadership. Uh, we talk all the time about 67 counties speaking with one voice, and you don't do that if you don't have elected officials who impress upon their employees the need to assist each other. Um, Elmore County could have done a motor grader operator training for its employees by itself. Uh, Henry County could have as well. Um, Chris drove this afternoon in the rain to be here to recognize these, these two men who travel to other counties to assist each other. Uh, it is what's great about county government, and that is the the, the sense of togetherness and the sense that we have to hold each other uh, not only accountable, but also to be the person to stand beside those who, who need help. And this program, I don't think there's anything like it in the country. Uh, Chris was being a little bit humble, and so is Richie with regard to what they've done that will be a model around the country. Uh, and on behalf of the association, I just want to thank the five of you for your leadership and commitment in, in letting uh, your staff leaders be so involved with us. Thank, Thank you, you, Sonny. We appreciate your sentiment. All right, we will proceed with the regular business, beginning with the review of the minutes of the January 8, 2018 Commission meeting. Any comments or corrections? We'll proceed with the review of the memorandum of warrants for the period of January 4, 2018 through January 16, 2018. Mr. Byer. Mr. Chairman, the uh, memorandum of warrants for this period is $1,388,463.03. Thank you. Any comments or questions on that? All right, we'll proceed with our new business. We'd like to invite uh, Lisa Finley from the Elmore County Economic Development Authority and Coach Barry Corbman from the Wetumpka High School Fishing Team uh, to come to the podium and uh, provide us with some insight on this proposal. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Um, first, I don't ever want to come to this mic without taking the opportunity to say thank you for all that you do for economic development in Elmore County and the citizens of Elmore County. It never goes unnoticed, and I think a lot of times people think it and they don't really say it out loud, so I want to make sure before we get started here this evening that you know that um, you are appreciated in all the work that you do, so thank you. Um, tonight, I'm going to let Coach Corbin come and talk about um, the upcoming tournament. My son was an angler for Coach Corbin, um, and he's now on a fishing scholarship for college, if you can believe that. Um, he's on his second college fishing team. Um, and in all the time that he was an angler at Wetumpka High School, I could never get the acronym ASABFA, and I can only say it right now because it's right in front of me. But it's the Alabama Student Angler Bass Fishing Association. 
um, what makes this so important to Elmore County, and we're so excited that um, Coach Corbin has been working so many years to try to get this to Elmore County, we have all of the state high schools come. This is a qualifying tournament for the final state tournament, but you'll have anywhere, and I'll let Coach Corbin give you the numbers, um, but anywhere from 180 to 200 boats. With each boat comes an angler, of course. Each angler has to have a boat captain. So an average of three people come into Elmore County with one boat for this tournament. And that's not, you know, counting any other um, participants that may do different things. And then you've got staff members from the state um, association, and then you've got different high school associations all over the state attending also. So that could really turn around a dollar several times. One thing um, I was really impressed with Coach Corbin also, there's a pre-tournament meeting on Thursday night and it's going to be held at Lanark at the Alabama Wildlife Federation in Millbrook on um, Friday night, uh, February 9th. I want to make sure I get that right. Um, and one thing we offered to do was, hey, can we do a cookout? Uh, for the group? Can we, you know, prepare a meal? W what would you like for us to do? And he said, absolutely not. What we would like is to have a simple snack, water, maybe a soft drink, and crackers, because what we want our guests that are coming into Elmore County to do is to go out in our restaurants and support our local business. So um, he has the foresight of all of that. Now, we hope that this will turn into something bigger even next year. And um, I can let him talk to you about that also. But um, Coach Corbin, if you'll come on up and tell him a little bit more. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you to the commission for supporting this effort also. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to come and visit with you. Again, I, I do wear several hats here. Very brief side note, thank you all so much for you and your department for what you did in the county in the last few days when we had these icy conditions on the road. I appreciate and commend you guys for the good work you did. Uh, she'd be commended for that and uh, keeping us safe. Uh, I wear, again, a lot of different hats as we talk to a high school coach. Uh, I have a, uh, this year about 20 anglers uh, from a very diverse background, from seventh grade all the way up to the uh, senior in, in high school. Uh, here in Elmore County, we have, uh, we talked with the team, hopeful with the team. Hopeful is, uh, even though it's a smaller school, they've got pretty close to 20 uh, members as well. I'm still working on the other schools here in the county to see if we can't get some more of those uh, taking part in this operation also. As part of what we do, as Lisa mentioned, we uh, have our state tournaments that start in the spring, but prior to that we do district tournaments. Just to give you some idea, we had two district tournaments that fished here on Lake Jordan. Uh, I had one of the district tournaments, so I, I can speak to those numbers because of being there, but we had over 50 boats come in for that, and that was just a... Uh, single tournament that they just came and basically wanted to fish. They have a one requirement, but most of those that fished mine fished all three of my tournaments that I hosted for that. Most of those were, or some of those were from here. Obviously, we talked and hopeful we're here, but we had them coming away as far as Oakman and uh, Hoover. Uh, students come down to participate and uh, fish this body of water and stay here in our hotels and stuff. So it's a great uh, aspect. Um, we have done well in Wetumpka. Uh, we have got top ten finishes multiple years in a row. We have won a state championship tournament uh, with the Alabama Student Anglers Bass Fishing Association and I uh, hope to build on last year's uh, very good record that we had. i uh, give you a little information about the ASA BFA. We are approximately 2,000 members strong between student anglers and boat captains. As Lisa pointed out, they just changed our numbers a little bit on there. We will have three in a boat, two anglers and one boat captain. Most of those you're going to find are going to want to stay right here in Elmore County. The local schools that we have right here close by will be Wetumpka, Hopeful, and ACA out of Montgomery. Most everybody else is probably going to be traveling down and wanting to stay in hotels. So it's a big plus we can do that. Being from here in Elmore County, this is a huge uh, plus. I you know, hope to see this continue to grow and we can keep this relationship going, continue to come back for many years to come. Uh, obviously, if I don't have to travel far, it makes me happy too. <laughs> so uh, we have great waters here in Elmore County, and we'd like to, you know, take part in all that we can. We will also have a tournament. The main headquarters will be out of uh, Alexander City, but we'll be fishing here in Elmore County. So there'll be people coming right through here.
elected official on Lake Martin as well. So that's a part of our county as well. So uh, very pleased to uh, be able to come and, and uh, have this group come and be a part of uh, here in Elmore County. Uh, I am the third director of District 7. Uh, two other district directors, Karen Stewart and Scott Virtue, were here as well. Uh, Karen is actually one of, one of the founding members that started back in 2011, I believe it was. So very great uh, heritage, and if you have any questions of me, I'll try and address them any way I can. Um, Mr. Cordman, I appreciate you being here. I had the opportunity to meet with you about a year ago. Um, as you mentioned, uh, your experiences in traveling all across the state in these tournaments, both the state championship tournament, but the tournaments leading up to it were oftentimes held in the northern part of the state or in, in some areas in the southern part of the state, but rarely held uh, here in central Alabama. And um, you shared lots of information with me, and I appreciate you taking the time to do that. Um, this type of event, um, this is a qualifying tournament, is that correct? That's correct, to get to our ASA BFA Classic Tournament. And uh, where is which that? Which will be held in May, and this year it will be on Smith Lake, okay. um, just north of Birmingham. Okay. Thank you. So today your, your request is for uh, the, the county commission uh, to assist with the sponsorship of the of this yes. tournament yes, itself sir. Yes, sir. in conjunction with the Elmore County Economic Development Authority. Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay. And um, uh, listed here, it's got uh, the, the $3,500 for the sponsorship, monies for hotel rooms, and then uh, some other facility needs there, with totaling $4,700. Is that correct? Roughly, that should be correct. Okay. That's correct. And those hotel rooms are for directors and that's correct we we have a large staff that comes it takes a lot of personnel to put this on um, we have our, our state tournament trailers and that kind of stuff and it probably takes about 15 or so of us to put this on so they'll be coming from all over the state to uh, help with that and you had I'm mentioned local. to me in our in our conversation you had mentioned to me how uh, these other cities that have had this before are all fighting over it every year to to get this because of the... That's correct. I, it, the economic impact when we come in is tend to be very generous. Uh, so we, we want to be fair with what we do and what we ask for. Uh, we don't give out, uh, something I meant to say earlier, we don't give out any kind of cash prizes, but we do give scholarships. Um, by having funds like this to offset some of our costs basically is what we're looking at. Last year we were able to give away over $110,000 in scholarship and prizes. Thank you. Any Thank you. comments or questions from commissioners? Uh, uh, chairman, I'd just like to say, Lisa, I appreciate what your organization is doing, and uh, our founders, the chairman of the state, he's here as well. I appreciate y'all working toward uh, pulling this uh, this together. And and also Tim Gothard, of course, who's the executive director of the uh, Alabama Wildlife Federation, uh, wanted to be a part of this, uh, this as well and offering up his facilities. I know that'll be a major expense. At, you know, we're seeing people in the community wanting to share to make this uh, make this happen. So appreciate that effort as well. Appreciate what you're doing. Invest your time in our children. Thank very you. important. Anything else? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Now we'd like to invite uh, Mr. Stephen Reeves from the Veterans Service Office to come to the podium and provide us some insight on uh, veteran services in Elmore County. On behalf of the Alabama Department of Veterans Affairs, I appreciate y'all letting me speak. On uh, November 1st, uh, the Alabama Department of Affairs hired me full-time for Elmore County. They also hired another veteran service officer for Otaga County, but before they were splitting them. So I'm working full-time over here, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. 
Uh, I try to take lunch 11.30 to 12.30, but I'm very flexible there. If somebody shows up, I'll see them. Uh, and basically, my, my job is to assist veterans and their family members in uh, applying for any benefits and knowing what their benefits might be. Uh, a couple of them I want to touch on is the Alabama Dependent GI Bill Program. That's for uh, veterans who were uh, rated at 40% VA disability. And if they're a resident of the state and they've been a resident for the last two years, I want to say resident of the state when they joined, uh, the state of Alabama is a program that was created in 1947. They'll pay for their spouses or their children's college. It's a pretty good program, and we still find a lot of people aren't aware of it. So we're trying to let the word get out. Uh, another one is the uh, state homes. There's four of them in the state for older veterans who uh, kind of need care. It's a lengthy paperwork to apply for it, but we can assist. It's about 20 pages. So a lot of people get frustrated and quit, but if they'll come see some of us, we can help them make it a lot easier process. Uh, my job, I help... Uh, Veterans get their discharge papers, DD-214s, which is pretty much necessary to get any of their benefits. Help them file disability claims, uh, VA compensation, uh, pension claims, which is for wartime veterans who are lower income. And one reason that's important is it's also uh, something that can be used for the widows of uh, the veterans and uh, if they need aid and attendance. If you've got older veterans who are uh, housebound, who need somebody taking care of them all the time and they're families are having to pay for it, we may be able to assist to get them some help paying for that through the VA. It's another program that a lot of people don't seem to know about, run into a lot of people that have been paying out of their own pocket for a long time. Uh, not everybody qualifies. The veteran has to have served during wartime. Uh, burial benefits, we can assist with that. Uh, there's, uh, there's just so many programs I really can't go over all of them right now because it would take most of the night. But uh, as of 2016, the last census showed there was over 8,000 veterans in Elmore County, and that doesn't include their dependents. And right now, I'm doing uh, almost <coughs> as many claims for dependents as I am veterans. So there's, there's a lot of uh, folks out there that we can help. Uh, hope, hopefully we can get the word out that we're here full time uh, and they know about us and they'll come down and, and get some assistance to come see us. And I appreciate y'all letting me know. Speaking Thank you very much for being here. We, um, it's very timely <coughs> that uh, you were assigned to be a full-time uh, representative here November 1st and, and representing Elmore County. Uh, Commissioner Mercer and I were at an event uh, probably just a few weeks before that date, and uh, we had several uh, veterans who were very concerned with the fact that um, the services were available, but the, the representatives were spread so thin covering multiple counties that it was difficult to, uh, you know, get the yes, all the information and services needed. So, so, so that I'm, and this information is available for everyone. You're located in the Veterans Affairs Office just yes, across sir. the street. Two hundred three Hill. Two hundred three Hill Street. Uh, I will be moving uh, soon over here to the courthouse. Don't have an exact date, but. Uh, and that's somebody, one of our that's one of our objectives with the new annex is to yes, get all the services here in one facility. So. Um, that's great. Well, I appreciate what you do. Any commissioners have any comments or questions? Uh, I do. Yes, sir. Uh, the lady that was here that preceded you yes, sir. has gone to Alex City. Yes, sir. She covers Alex. She covers Tallapoosa County and Coosa County, and she was covering here two days a yeah. week. Uh, the reason I mention it, uh, my wife talked to her today. Okay. Uh, I, my father-in-law lives in Georgia. Uh huh. So. Even though you're not in Elmore County, you can help veterans from other areas. Oh, yes, sir. I, I help veterans. I wanted, I wanted to mention that. Yes, sir. We help them from any, in any counties in the state. I get calls all the time, and I have had some from Georgia, like burial benefits and all. Yeah. Uh, but I work for the state of Alabama, but I can help any veteran. Right. And uh, there's a lot of things available that people don't know about yeah, it, it's, as far as benefits. Yes, sir. I'm just thankful to have a, a full-time service office here in Elmore County. Me too. And we'll be glad it. when you move over here where everybody, a lot of veterans ask, 
And I know one time they was coming and they were on a Monday and Wednesday and, and they couldn't get help. So I'm glad to see that. Yes, it's the last person covering had Monday and Friday. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm here five days a week. That's great. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I had to thank you for coming, Mr. Reeves. I had the privilege of meeting Mr. Reeves today. It was ironic. I went by to check on uh, uh, some veterans' uh, papers and so forth, and uh, he told me that he uh, and he was on the agenda for tonight. But I really appreciate what you're doing because, just as you said, there's so many veterans out there that don't have a clue who served 45 years ago, like I did, that don't have a clue as to the specific. Uh, benefits that may be available at some point to the veterans and their families. So near and dear to my heart, and I thank you for being here, and I thank you for your 20 years of service and ability to sir. Well, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate you being here. Mr. Chairman, if I may, yes. I, I worked with Mr. Reeves on a matter. He does an outstanding job. I, he helped me with a matter that the uh, court appointed me to take care of, and uh, does an outstanding job is, is uh, very, very helpful. So the, the county is very lucky to have him here. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Well, we'd like to invite Mr. Taylor Vice uh, to come forward, a representative, uh, Director of Government Affairs, is that correct? Yes, for uh, Spectrum Charter Bright House? Yes, sir. Et cetera? Et cetera. All yes, right. sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission, thank you all for having me today. Uh, again, Taylor Vice with Charter Communications. Uh, handle government affairs uh, for charter uh, based in the state of Alabama. Um, wanted to uh, kind of go through the packet that's in front of you there and kind of talk about um, some of the some of the new um, uh, the new services that we have out and, and the upgrades that we've made to the area uh, and, and what that entails now that obviously the acquisition of Bright House uh, occurred a couple years ago. So um, if, if you look through the first page want to talk about from an economic development perspective and, and Ms. Finley uh, can speak to this and certainly want to be a partner with her as well, but there's opportunities out there for us to grow uh, within the county uh, as economic development partners uh, to ensure that all uh, large tenants, corporations, et cetera, are served with fiber connectivity uh, that can, you know, go up to speed the 10 gigs to serve those, those tenants, if you will. And so that's I know that's a big part of economic development, recruitment, uh, and getting jobs to this area is to have, you know, uh, industrial parks that have those capabilities. Uh, so we are glad to be a partner with that. Uh, I will reach out to Ms. Finley and make sure that she has all of our proper uh, contact information for our sales reps that, that ensure uh, that we can serve those facilities uh, in a timely manner. Um, going forward from a residential perspective, some of the things that, that we've done recently, uh, if you'll turn to the fourth page there, uh, is what we call the introduction of Spectrum. And so Spectrum pricing and packaging um, is in an effort to, we went through a merger in 2016, in an effort to uh, combine all companies, Time Warner Cable, Charter Communications, and Bright House Network, we had to come up with a, with a pricing structure uh, that we refer to as spectrum pricing and packaging, and that essentially gets everybody across the country, whether you're in L.A. or Elmore County, uh, the same price across the board. Um, and so uh, what that entails uh, is uniform pricing for all of our services across the board. Um, what that also does is increase the Internet speeds uh, up to 100 megabits per second. So legacy uh, services, legacy uh, contracts that, that folks may have had that might have been at certain different tiers of 20 megabits per second, 60 megabits per second, whatever they were, um, those folks have, have ultimately gone up uh, with spectrum pricing and packaging to 100 megabits per second. So uh, industry-wide, that's, uh, as far as I know, that's the fastest uh, baseline tier uh, across the country. And so it's, it's, it's extremely beneficial for those residents to have those speeds uh, to, to do what they need to do uh, at their homes and places of business. Uh, next slide there talks about the small business. Uh, so small to medium sized business, uh, we offer now a baseline tier of 100 megabits per second uh, with the option to buy uh, 200 megabits or 300 megabits. So those are those small medium sized businesses that don't necessarily need fiber but have the ability to purchase those types of services. Uh, 
the, the next slide talks about our inter enterprise customers, and those are the big tenants that need fiber connectivity. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have the ability to go up to 10 gigs worth of service uh, to those customers, to those commercial customers. And, uh, you know, that's by far the biggest recruitment tool that I've seen across the country and across the state is just the ability to have that connectivity available for those, you know, make-ready sites, if you will. Um, one of the things that we committed to uh, on the next slide, slide seven, uh, we committed to is, is what's called Spectrum Internet Assist. And so uh, there's folks out there that maybe are on SSI or have a child in, in uh, the free and reduced lunch program. And so I'm not sure what the percentage is here in Elmore County, uh, but those folks now qualify for Spectrum Internet Assist. And it's a, uh, a reduced rate uh, internet program uh, that addresses those folks that are on SSI or have a child in, in uh, free and reduced lunch program. So it allows folks that might not have had the opportunity to, to purchase services before uh, purchase them at a, at a reduced rate. Um, and the next slide is, is obviously, you know, the partnership with the All uh, and the Economic Development Authority in, in trying to be a partner and trying to, to move uh, Elmore County forward and try to address you know, the issues that are outstanding today and, and make sure that we have the ability to, to move forward as a partner with you all uh, through the community. All right, Mr. Vice, we appreciate you being here. I'm sure along with my fellow commissioners, we may have some questions or comments um, sure. regarding uh, some of the things that you shared with us. And I would like to highlight that um, I, I do appreciate uh, you being here and appreciate you providing some information on the the services that are currently provided and the plans moving forward to improve services in certain areas. Right. You know, as you're probably very aware, some of the challenges we face in Elmore County is um, access to Internet in general. We have sure. certain areas in our county that have very limited access or no access at all. Sure. And so, you know, for us as a county commission to develop the county, both residential and from an economic development standpoint, um, it's important for us. We, we like seeing services being improved, but that can't be the only part of the process. It right. also needs to be expanding the services to those areas that are underserved or that currently have no service available to them. And we as a county commission receive, I, I think many of us probably feel like experts in internet now because we get so many questions about internet um, from citizens and, uh, and rightfully so, they, they're looking for someone to talk to, they're looking for someone to ask these questions and their questions are all very valid and they're very real. Um, we face them as well. Uh, I have four children, all of them are school age, they're all trying to do schoolwork and everything else, and in certain pockets of our county we don't have that access. And sure. so we get asked those questions, and what we would like to do is make sure that we have a, a relationship with either you or someone within your organization, Charter Communications, that that we can communicate with regularly so that we can begin to make progress on some of these questions and sure. concerns that people have. Um, it is in our position, um, we as a county commission do have responsibility with the franchising rights for a internet cable service in the county. Correct. However, we do not dictate the pricing, we do not limit it to one vendor. Uh, there, there's a lot of things that, that happen in that process, um, yet we do feel responsible, and, and I do, uh, that we owe it to the citizens of Elmore County who put us in this position where we can give them answers. And so what I hope is that as charter continues, and I realize it's a business, I, I, I understand that. Um, but our hope is that Charter will make real progress in Elmore County in the development of access in the rural areas. Sure. I appreciate the access to lower income people, but some of those lower income people live in places where you don't have service anyway. So, right. you know, the opportunity to pay 14.99 a month is fabulous, but they they don't even 
have the access at all to it because of where they live. So, sure. Um, so those are some things that just for me, you know, from my perspective, I think that it's important that that we are provided as a county commission a way by which we can answer the citizens' questions, and and we need to be able to show them progress in both the rural access and in the in the the services itself. And Definitely. so, those are some areas that. And I, I again, I appreciate you being here and willing to to communicate with us and and hear some of our questions and concerns. Um, and and it's our hope that we can you know, together develop some some real plans. I know there's plans in the legislature to work on rural development, um, but, you know, we're, we're focused here on Elmore County, and, and we need to have that link with you. Right, and and I'm sure Sonny could attest to this. It's it's not just Elmore County. It's it's across the, it's across the state. It's across the country. And, and, you know, there's things being done at a federal level. There's things being done at a state level uh, that are trying to address that problem. Um, you know, as any business person would know, uh, it's, it's the cost of doing business and what does it take to get out to that individual's mm -hmm. home and whatnot. And does it make business sense to do that? And uh, we're, we're hopeful that at a federal level and even at the state level that there's some opportunities out there to, to try to bridge that gap. Uh, and to get to those areas, um, you know, as it goes to being a resource for you all, uh, Richie here has, has my cell phone number and, and email address, and I'll be happy to provide it to you all as well. Uh, that's my job. I'm a resource for you all. Uh, I'm a liaison to our company, uh, representing our company to you all. So uh, I, I try to pride myself on on helping wherever I can, and, and sometimes the answer is no, but at least I'll get you an answer and, and try to try to help you all with any concerns that you all may have that are brought by your constituents. Thank you. Any other comments or questions, Commissioners? I got a question. Yes, yes sir. Uh, one of my questions is, is, if I understood you right a while ago, you mentioned something about California and Alabama and all of that being the same. Yes, sir. Well, the economic situations in California are not the same as they are in Alabama. Sure. You know, 1,200 square foot house in Los Angeles might be half a million dollars. Here it might be 80,000 or sure. 60,000. So we got a lot of different factors there, so I'm a little confused about that. Uh, it, you know, if we're going to talk about pricing being the same in California as it is in Alabama, that's two separate things. The uh, uh, Another question I got is, in relation to you specifically, where are you located at? Based in Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham, okay. But going back to what uh, Chairman Stubbs said, we got kids in Elmore County. I know my uh, grandson goes to Prattville Christian Academy in Prattville. Everything's computer. Mm -hmm. We got kids in my district, which is very rural, who have no access to any internet. And if they could get it, uh, even hearing me talk of what I'm told, but I'm not a computer person, okay? I'm going to be honest with sure. you. Sure. I'm not either. I'm an old person. Yes. Sir. Uh, you know, you, you can pay $190, $200 a month for Wi-Fi and this and that. Well, right. in my district, that's not feasible. Sure. I mean, we got people that are living on less than $1,000 a month. So my concern is that we figure out a way to get service to those kids that are uh, minority kids from parents that have low income that don't have the same capabilities to get the education that they need because they don't have the service. That's what I'd like to see us try to do. And I, I know you guys do too as other commissioners. We've got to figure out a way to get rural Elmore County where they can get up to the educational curve as far as computers. But... Uh, when you mentioned that about California, that kind of threw me off. Well, I, I don't see that as a comparison to Titus, Alabama, to be sure. honest. Well, it, it's not just California. It's 41 other states that we're in, too. Right. So uh, just trying to make a comparison of, of trying to have unified pricing across the board. I understand. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, on your local contacts that we have in this area, do you, how close are they, uh, you know, the local people you have that information? I'm sorry, what not? How close is the local people that we could talk to in this area? How close are they? Yeah, from We've got an office just a couple miles from here uh, that's that staffed with, with 
front counter folks, uh, but it, 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 I mean, like I said, I've got, I can certainly provide you information. You can call me 24 hours a day if you want. Okay, because I know in, in my district, and I think in the other district, like uh, Chairman Stewart was talking about, they have no <clears throat> internet access and all that, but I, I know a reason that two people one up in uh, right on 111 out there and one up in Emory Mountain. I've been hearing complaints about different things. Anyway, I'll, I'll bring that to my uh, rich attention and we'll get on it. But I'm glad you came and we uh, we uh, hope to be doing business with you. Like I said, uh, my number one goal is to, to try to help you all with, with your constituents that you all mm -hmm. represent. And, uh, you know, the, the best I can, I can do that will certainly make my life easier and hopefully make you all the same. Mr. Vice, I also want to thank you for being here tonight. I, uh, in my capacity of working with the Economic Development Authority, I as well have learned more about broadband than I really thought I ever wanted to know. But I, I have uh, needed to do that in order to best serve my citizens so I could talk somewhat intelligently about it uh, because it is a great need. Uh, it affects our quality of life. It affects our ability for parts of our county to be considered for development, whether it be residential or either uh, industrial. Uh, and, and But we also understand that it's a business. You know, the county commission does not own the infrastructure that delivers that signal to these houses or these businesses. And if you expanding your system does not meet your business model, we, we get that. Um, what I would like to have a commitment from you is if um, Spectrum would reassess uh, our area. Our, our county has, has grown. Uh, we've got people that have moved from uh, surrounding counties into our county, not necessarily maybe into a new subdivision that's been developed, but very close to these subdivisions and these densely populated areas, there are a lot more people than, than once lived there, even 10 years ago, five years ago. Uh, so I, I would like to ask you if, if whatever model y'all use to assess the uh, how reasonable it is to invest money in, into a county, would you please pull that model out again and look at it? Definitely. Um, we, I have people that send me uh, emails. Uh, I f would say I probably, um, because I have been a little more in front of this issue, I talk about it a little more in public. Uh, I probably have published more writings about it. Uh, so I get the emails some of the other commissioners may not get. I just got one the other day, uh, a guy that has contacted me um, probably five times, and he's literally about to have to move somewhere from where he's living now. He didn't check into the fact that he didn't have access to, to broadband. Sure. Uh, his wife can't do her online schooling. Uh, they have a child now. She can't go to the... What we find a lot of people do is go to a public space, McDonald's or wherever Wi-Fi is available, and they do homework or they do, uh, you know, for their child or either uh, their continued education. And he's going to have to move because his lifestyle will not allow his wife to be gone to do that. Um, so um, not only is it is it holding some of our businesses back, it's adversely affecting the quality of life of our citizens. Uh, so I would I would ask that you would please again. Uh, talk with your people that make those decisions, reassess Elmore County, uh, see if, if there's some investments you can make. We also get a lot of calls about uh, your, your service in the county. Uh, you know, we just have to simply explain the truth. We, we do have a franchising agreement with you, as we do with other service providers. Uh, nothing in that agreement uh, that we have states that we can dictate your day-to-day -day operations, your private business, uh, and we respect that. Uh, we um, we feel as if um, you know there, we wish there would be something we could do about that. Uh, I have problems at my house, um, but the fact of the matter is, we, there's nothing we can do. We would encourage you to look into that into that area as well. And I know the one reason that we we probably get a lot of those calls is we're you know we're the closest uh, to our to the citizens, the county commissioners. We interact with people every day. Uh, if they don't know who else to call, I promise you they call us. But you would think that probably um, the most common call we get is, can, can you pave my road and can you fix my pothole? And it's not. Sure. It's, can you get me internet service? Sure. Overwhelmingly. 
So, uh, again, I appreciate you being here tonight. I appreciate you understanding our situation, and we look forward to working with you. Definitely. And, and to that point, too, being close to the ground, uh, you know, y'all know when – Y'all know when new developments are coming into place, and that while they might be in the city or they might be in the county, uh, if plat maps come in and, and, you know, before the roads get on the ground, that's certainly the, the best time to, to get that infrastructure in there. It, it, it saves us a ton of money from ripping people's driveways and whatnot up. And so if we can address those on the front end, uh, as we're aware of, of new neighborhoods, et cetera, uh, you know, we'll certainly do our part in, in making sure we get in there in a timely manner uh, as it relates to the existing ones uh, that are currently out there. You know, like I said, it's uh, shoot me the addresses. Uh, we'll have everyone on check. Uh, and, and my biggest thing is, is I don't want to tell somebody no. I'm gonna at least going to give them an option, whether it be to help pay for a, do some type of cost share and, and help pay for, for the line to their home, whatever it may be. Uh, I want to give them an option rather than, you know, just saying no. And there's also, while I'm not a sales rep by any stretch, but there's also, you know, other opportunities for uh, charters not the answer everywhere. And, and there's certainly other providers here that, that might uh, be able to provide that solution. So I, I know y'all are probably communicating with them as well, but uh, there, there's sometimes better solutions out there. Well, in closing, I, we do appreciate you being here, and I think that it's important um, that, that you understand that, that uh, these are big problems and we're not uh, necessarily singling Charter out as the only source of a solution. Sure. Uh, we are exploring various opportunities that we might be able to identify ways to reach some of these areas to, and to facilitate the needs of the citizens. And I do appreciate Commissioner Mercer bringing up the, the reassessment. Our county is growing, yep. and we have areas. I, I have someone who lives within a, a mile of, of Redland Elementary School, and they don't have access, and they live within a mile of one of our largest elementary schools in the county. And so, you know, to me, that type of when – when a brand new school is built within the last decade, you know, it – it's common sense that there's going to be development in that area sure. and that there would be a need for um, for that type of service. So uh, we'll continue to communicate with you. We'll work through um, Mr. Byer in, in consolidating some of our comments and questions and, and requests. And uh, we will, uh, Mr. Byer, if you'll maybe put back on, uh, on a few, and Kimberly, if you'll put a note, maybe uh, we'll circle back maybe in about six months and, and maybe have you come back. Uh, sure. sometime closer to the end of the year and provide us another um, bit of information on progress. Definitely. We're right. glad to. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll proceed with uh, the next item of new business. Consider setting a public hearing for 050 retail beer off-premises only and a 070 retail table wine off-premises only liquor license transfer application from Jet Pep 756 Inc. to Circle K Stores Inc. for Circle K Store 270 South Memorial Drive, Prattville, Alabama. Mr. Byer, my understanding is this is a, uh, a transfer from one. That is correct. One gas station to another. That's right. Okay. Any comments or questions? All right. Proceeding. Uh, discuss uh, ACETA board appointment due. And this is a correction on our uh, agenda. This is actually due 2 18 um, of Sharon Alexander. This is a, a reappointment. She was completing the term of a uh, previous uh, board member. She is That term is coming to an end. And ACETA has uh, submitted a letter of request to have Ms. Alexander reappointed. Any comments or questions there? Chairman, I'd just like to say that uh, Ms. Alexander has uh, been a great asset to the uh, ACETA board and also the uh, Elmore County Economic Development Authority, for which she serves on as well. So um, I, I think she would be a great, uh, great choice to be reappointed to that board. Thank you. All right, proceeding with the consent docket, approved travel memorandum. Any comments or questions on the travel memorandum? Next item, approve 40 hours sick leave donation from Charles Harrell to Cole Cousins. And personnel notifications, notification of resignation of Charles Harrell 
Equipment Operator 3, Effective 1, 18-18. Proceed now with the reports to the Commission, Mr. Byer. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, um, the, uh, in front of you, you've got a packet that uh, is titled the Goat Hill Prep. That is a communication that came out from the ACCA today. Just putting that in front of you, make sure you saw that either through your email or now in a hard copy. Several uh, danger bills, several ACCA bills, just kind of gives you an update. And included is the information that the ACCA sent out last week on the uh, simplified seller's use tax. And, uh, um, you know, there's some, some details in there for you as well. I think Commissioner Mercer is going to talk about that here in a minute. Um, last week, uh, as everybody knows, we had the winter storm and the response. Uh, uh, overall, that went very well, like any event uh, that nature. There's things we learned from that, and uh, I've already been uh, working with staff to get that corrected uh, and, uh, and addressed. Um, when I say corrected, I mean things we can improve on. Uh, Eric Jones and the EMA office, our public safety um, side with our volunteer fire departments and sheriff's department and the highway department with Luke McGinney and his staff. Uh, I think they did an excellent job and that was really our first uh, uh, big event where everybody was in the county operating and uh, um, a little bit different event with the ice, something that we don't typically uh, deal with. So again, we've got some learning points there, but uh, uh, overall I think very good. Uh, I appreciate the way that y'all communicated with us, hopefully from your end. Everything that you got was timely. Everything you got was uh, uh, keeping you well informed so you could respond appropriately. Um, on the operations and logistics side, uh, we're in the phase two of uh, uh, renovations here in the, uh, the older part of the building. Got the uh, probate office. Um, the, the court functions moved last week. We're working on the uh, other offices that were vacated. <clears throat> As the Veterans Affairs said, you know, they're one of the uh, probably the phase three uh, offices that we'll be moving as we get everybody shifted and, and corrected. Uh, still got plenty of projects going on. Uh, the firing range project uh, for the sheriff is um, slated to, to uh, for bids to be due the end of this month. We have already started the, uh, the roof discussion about uh, this building and re rehabbing it in the jail. Um, and then uh, the uh, um, the other things that we've got going on related to uh, operations would be our personnel project. Uh, we're well into that. We meet tomorrow to talk about chapters 11 and 13 of our manual, in addition to uh, um, working on the uh, job descriptions with all our um, department heads. Um, today we had some meetings with ALDOT about our uh, project, joint project with the city of uh, Millbrook, about a signal at Grandview at intersection improvement at Kinsley. Hopefully in the next uh, couple of weeks we'll be in a position to uh, move forward with that permitted project with ALDOT and uh, working on our other major projects to get a right-of-way acquisition. That will be the roundabout in our corridor project on Redland Road. Um, last week we were supposed to uh, provide a presentation on behalf of the ACCA and ACEA to uh, Legislative Infrastructure Task Force. Uh, the, uh, nobody could get on the infrastructure to get to the meeting, so they had to cancel it. So that will be uh, rescheduled now for February 7th at 3.30. Um, so that's a, a great honor for us to be able to uh, provide part of that testimony on behalf of the 67 counties. And appreciate y'all's support and uh, helping us get ready for that. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have in the way of report. Do y'all have any questions for me? Mr. Byer, that uh, project for the Sheriff's Department, the fire and range, do you have a time frame on that? Uh, the bids will be accepted at the end of the month. Uh, it'll probably take us about a month or so to get contracts in place with the sheriff, and then uh, from there on, uh, there is no specified um, working days or anything like that. I talk to the sheriff about it. He just wants to make sure it's completed. Um, it's not a large project. It shouldn't take him very long, but uh, okay. we, we've kind of specified all that uh, just as the sheriff asked. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Byer. We'll go to reports from the commission. Commissioner Holt. Uh, just a few things. One, uh, Sonny, I appreciate you being here. We appreciate what you do. It's very good to go to your conventions and meetings, and you learn a lot of things. It's very beneficial, and I appreciate what you do for all of us as commissioners. Uh, on the lighter side, at least I like your best. <laughs> But uh, I probably lost you a few votes, right? <laughs> but uh, being very serious, uh, I wanted to say that I appreciate what Luke and Eric and Richie did this past week. 
Uh, and I talked to Richie and Eric on a couple of occasions. Uh, I talked to Eric on maybe one, but Richie on a lot of occasions. And, uh, I can't say enough about what your employees did for our citizens. I mean, it was remarkable. Uh, I tried to get out a little bit Wednesday afternoon, and the roads were bad. And uh, I went home. And I know you guys, because I talked to Richie, what, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? And uh, you were out checking roads, and Eric was doing his job, and Luke was out checking roads. And it's just not enough we can say to say we appreciate it. And especially your employees, uh, because, uh, you know, they're working when nobody else is working. And that's a big deal. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, the state was off, uh, what, a couple of days or a day and a half or whatever. A lot of other places were off, and your people were working. And that's a big deal. And uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Daughtry. Just echoing what uh, the commissioner said about our ACCA uh, people. They, they never cease to amaze me at, at how they represent all the counties of Alabama and how much they accomplish. Uh, and hopefully that will continue in the future. I know it will, particularly with our uh, highway bill. Still got my sign right here, Sonny, by the way. <laughs> uh, and thank you all for coming very much, too. And, and uh, this fishing tournament that's coming up, that, as, as they pointed out, that's, that's, I think that's something great that our youth are involved in that. certainly benefits the county. Uh, I have the privilege of representing the Lake Martin area, so I can attest to the importance of those type of things. In fact, uh, uh, the economic boom up that we see in the lake area when they have a Bassmasters tournament up there is just unbelievable uh, when you see the activity. And speaking of that, we had uh, two weeks ago when the first storm came through was the uh, practice round for a major Bassmaster tournament, Lake Martin, 170 plus anglers from all over the nation. And I can honestly say I've seen bass fishermen out fishing in 20 degree weather. Uh, they're dedicated to what they do, and uh, I appreciate them uh, coming to Lake Martin very much. It, it gives us a, a big. Uh, economic boom when they do come uh, and thank you all so much Richie and Eric and, and the Sheriff's Department everybody involved in keeping us safe through the storm thank you Mr. Chairman thank you Commissioner Mercer thank you Chairman I as well want to say Sonny I appreciate you coming here um, typically when there's a room full of commissioners and Sonny gets up and says I'll be brief <laughs> we know it's going to be 30 minutes later but that's because he has a wealth of knowledge. Uh, we m very much value his opinion. We value uh, his staff being involved in helping us be successful, and, and I appreciate that very much, Sonny. Um, you know, I, 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 most people probably do not realize what goes on during an event like we went through uh, last week. They don't know that uh, there's three or four people in this room did not get much sleep. Uh, I know they don't because they were texting me at 11 o'clock at night two o'clock in the morning uh, and I appreciate that uh, they're allowing us to be a part of what's going on so we can help pe uh, keep our people informed because we would get any questions about uh, you know where where are roads passable and, and where are they not so um, uh, that, and that lasted probably I guess three days I, I really appreciate the effort appreciate the uh, hard work I was out with the crew with the crew Thursday morning once we realized removing the ice would uh, actually be effective because the, the temperatures were rising um, and a bunch of hard-working guys, and, and so I, I appreciate that very much. Um, just um, one event that's taking place in District 4 that I'll uh, make mention of is a really big event. It's going to be the Mardi Gras Parade February the 3rd in uh, Millbrook. Uh, the, there'll be vendors in Village Green uh, starting that morning, and then there'll be a parade at, uh, at noon. Where there'll be, if you've never been, you should go. There's thousands of people there that will line the streets from the Spokehouse Restaurant up to just past the... Uh, the uh, uh, City Hall, uh, and so please try to attend. Uh, in in my capacity of serving as the uh, the legislative uh, committee representative for Elmore County, um, do want to make make mention of one bill that you'll see in the um, the Goat Hill Prep as the ACC is uh, publishes that or sends that out to us. 
Uh, it's SB 130. And uh, Sonny could stand up here and articulate exactly what that it is, but I'll, I'll attempt to do it um, very briefly because it's very complex. Uh, basically, right now, the state statute um, allows um, for businesses that sell uh, online uh, and ship into Alabama to take part in a simplified seller's use tax program. Um, they uh, pay across the board 8% tax to, uh, to Alabama and is distributed amongst the counties and the state. Uh, you can participate in the program as long as you do not have a physical presence in the state or as long as you don't have an affiliate that has a physical presence in the state. Amazon is one of the, is, is the largest um, uh, company that pays into that program. Uh, last year they purchased a company called Whole Foods. There are five Whole Foods in, in the uh, state, uh, the largest, uh, and they're positioned in the largest cities in the state. What that means is Amazon now is um, in a position where they are, could be deemed not eligible to participate in that program. Uh, Elmore County has received over $300,000 from this program that goes into our general fund since the program started. Um, SB 130 addresses this and um, again, without getting into 20 minutes of details, basically would allow Amazon and to, to continue to participate in the program. Now I'm looking at Sonny and he's over there squirming because he wants to get up and add a lot to that because he knows I probably missed some details, but that, in a, that is it in a nutshell. I, I would encourage you to um, read about this bill, um, be aware, <coughs> voice your opinion to you legislators. Um, it could have a great adverse effect on Elmore County if, if, that, uh, if it doesn't pass or if it passes in some capacity where it would result in our cities and our uh, counties not being able to continue to collect those dollars because Amazon couldn't pay into it. Uh, it will affect not only the counties, but it will affect those agencies that we fund, uh, specifically uh, fire departments, uh, sheriff's department, and any other agencies that, that we fund. Uh, so, Chairman, that's, that's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Reeves? We'll say I, I thank everyone for coming, and I want to say to our employees, I want to thank you for keeping us informed and, and safe during the winter weather, and that's all I have for now. Thank you. I appreciate my fellow commissioners and their comments and everyone being here tonight. We appreciate our visitors who have uh, provided us with much-needed information for both the county commission and for our citizens. Uh, I just encourage all of you to be active and engaged in the legislative process. Um, this is something that at times can be discouraging with the things that we see on the national news, uh, but I would encourage you to recognize that there are many, many things that we can do on a local level that have nothing to do with what's happening nationally. So don't give up on local government just because of the things that you see on a national level. There's lots of things that we can do to improve our cities and to improve Elmore County, and we're committed to doing that. And so if we are actively engaged in what's happening on a legislative level at the state of Alabama, some of the things like SB 130 and several others, that uh, we, we need to know what's going on so that we're not just surprised at what got passed. Um, we need to know what's happening at the legislature before something gets to a vote and before it passes, and then we react negatively and we say things like, I didn't know they were talking about that. That's not really a good, good comment to make. Um, we, we need to know what they're talking about. And if you have questions about things that do affect Elmore County directly that are happening in the legislature, please contact us. Uh, as my fellow commissioners mentioned, uh, the ACCA keeps us very aware of things that will impact Elmore County directly, whether it be from a budgetary standpoint revenue, whether it be something that's going to be an added expense for us, um, that uh, unfunded mandates, for example, which sometimes occur on a state level, they require us to do things, but then they don't give us the money to do them. And so those are things we want to be aware of, and we would encourage you to be aware of as well. I'll also mention uh, myself and some of my fellow commissioners were able to attend a Martin Luther King Jr. celebration at St. James Church. Uh, I appreciate those who organized that. We have several of them here tonight. They participated in the event. 
Uh, we appreciate your comments. Uh, we appreciate your desire to uh, develop a unified county. And uh, as I said at that meeting, and I'll say again tonight, it begins with each of us. Um, if there's change that needs to be happened, the change needs to happen with, with myself and with yourself first before we cast uh, and expect change from someone else. So uh, as we do that together collectively, um, I, I look forward to the great things that will happen here in Elmore County. We'll now proceed with the important calendar dates. Uh, Ms. Kim? Saturday, February 10th is the next Kennywood cleanup from 9 to 1 at the locations listed, noting the rotating location will be at the Cusada Post Office. And Monday, February 12th is our next commission meeting at 5 with the business meeting following. Thank you. We'll reconvene in a few minutes. I'd like to welcome everybody back to the Elmore County Commission business meeting dated Monday, January 22nd, 2018. I'll call this business meeting to order. We'd like to invite uh, Commissioner Daughtry to provide the invocation, following which he'll lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we come together to do uh, the business of the county. Father, we pray for your wisdom, your guidance, and everything that we do. May we always put your first in our thoughts and our actions, Father. May we always remember that we're nothing but servants of the people. Father, we pray your blessings on everyone that's here, and anything we accomplish, we'll give you the praise, glory, and honor, because it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Ms. Kim, would you please call roll? Commissioner Holt? Here. Commissioner Daughtry? Here. Chairman Stubbs? Here. Commissioner Mercer? Here. Commissioner Reed? Here. All right, we'll proceed with regular business. Review of the minutes of the January 8, 2018 commission meeting. Is there a motion? Motion. Ms. Kim? Commissioner Holt? Yes. Commissioner Daughtry? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Is there a motion to approve the memorandum of warrants for the period of January 4, 2018 through January 16, 2018? Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Kim? Commissioner Holt? Yes. Commissioner Daughtry? Yes. Chairman Studd? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Proceeding to the new business, is there a motion to approve the Alabama Student Angler Bass Fishing Association sponsorship for statewide qualifying tournament in Elmore County? Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Kim? Commissioner Holt? Yes. Commissioner Daughtry? Yes. Chairman Stubb? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Proceeding, is there a motion to approve setting a public hearing of Monday, February 12, 2018 at 5 p.m. for 050 retail beer off-premises only and a 070 retail table wine off-premises only liquor license transfer application from JetPep? 756 Inc. to Circle K Stores Inc. for Circle K Store 2709067 at 1715 South Memorial Drive, Prattville, Alabama. Motion approved. Second. Ms. Kim. Commissioner Holt. Yes. Commissioner Daughtry. Yes. Chairman Stubb. Yes. Commissioner Mercer. Yes. Commissioner Reed. Yes. Proceeding with the consent docket, is there a motion to approve the consent docket as listed? Motion approved. Second. Ms. Kim. Commissioner Holt. Yes. Commissioner Daughtry. Yes. Chairman Sud. Yes. Commissioner Mercer. Yes. Commissioner Reeves. Yes. Personnel notifications, notification of resignation of Charles Harrell, Equipment Operator 3, Effective 1, 1818. I'd, uh, I was asked, and I'd like to give uh, Mr. Bobby Mays a moment. He wanted to uh, address the commission regarding uh, the MLK Junior celebration, and uh, just want to give him an opportunity to do that.
County. Uh, also, uh, your comments with respect to the some of the ills that we see uh, in, the, in, in, in this uh, country, in this state, some in this county. It's uh, refreshing to see where people are really trying to come together for a common good. And we do a lot of things uh, personally to try to uh, bridge some of the gaps that we see in uh, the area. And it is extremely refreshing to see others uh, working on the same page. My hat off to the commission. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Byer, any additional report? Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Ms. Kim? Commissioner Holt? Yes. Commissioner Daughtry? Yes. Chairman Studs? Yes. Yes. Mercer? <laughs> Commissioner yes. Reeves? Yes. Meeting adjourned.